Foods. A mock-up of the train is currently occupying one of our studios just down the corridor here at Yorkshire Television, where the celebrated actor and raconteur Sir Peter Ustinov is filming a program which explores the recent history of Europe through some of the famous and the infamous who have travelled on the world's most luxurious train. Here's Barbara. Since its romantic journey began in 1883 through the pages of European history, the Orient Express has been more than a luxury train. It's been the court of refugee monarchs, its narrow corridors, a feeding ground for spies on the rich and powerful. Across its dining car tables, peace treaties have been signed, surrenders accepted. And there's enough romance left to woo the modern traveller. last a cushy job from calendar a trip on the orient express of course you never know who you might meet excuse me uh, is that seat taken no i've even ordered uh, tea i hope somebody'll be along great thank you very much mm. a slightly gruff but real sir peter ustinov the train of course is a fake it's been recreated in a ytv studio in a set nearly 70 feet long for a new drama documentary its days as a rolling court behind it. The Orient Express... It's really a vehicle for Sir Peter and his gift for storytelling to look back at the famous and notorious passengers who really travelled on the train and into European history. There's Hemingway, who was an assiduous, I believe, traveller on it, and there's Matahari, who, uh, of course, has plenty of opportunity for spying in all these little cubicles. And uh, there's the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Which of those people that you've mentioned would you actually like to meet on the train? Uh, with Hemingway around, I think I'd, I'd be running away from him most of the time with his insistence on men being men and uh, macho drinking and, uh, well, there are no bulls here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff I don't really, I don't feel at home with. Are you the sort of man who likes to talk to people on trains? No, I usually try to be alone. I was rather gruff to you when you arrived, wasn't I? I there were so many free seats here, I grudgingly said that one was free. <laughs> no, I don't, actually. I don't, uh, I don't solicit conversations, even in airplanes. Hoping to strike up conversation in the next compartment, an ex-British monarch and his divorcee partner, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. In their day, the whole train crossed the channel on the ferry so passengers could stay aboard discreetly all the way from London to Paris. Sir Peter may overcome his reserve to talk to them. He's written a novel about unusual travelling companions. It's about God and Satan who meet in Washington, first time after the fall from grace and they make their first big mistake. They, th they know that it's the most influential capital in the world, but one thing they didn't realize is they wouldn't be able to get into any hotel because they haven't got any luggage. The devil's awfully nice with God, and God eventually says, why are you so helpful to me? And the devil says, you forget I was trained as an angel. Like a slightly peaked butler. Next week, complete with earthly butlers, they leave the studio for filming on the real Orient Express. Uh, has anyone in the office got my ticket for that one?